my dear viewers welcome to the summary of the chapter human eye so first of all we have studied about the different parts of a human eye so if i consider this one as a human eye we have we have studied about the different parts of this human eye and the role of each part also we have studied after that we have studied about power of accommodation so what is power of accommodation it is the ability of the eye lens to focus distant or nearby objects clearly on the retina of the human eye okay also we have studied the role of ciliary muscles in power of accommodation after that we have studied about the near point of a normal human eye and what is the far point of a normal human eye the near point of a normal human eye is also called as the least distance of distinct vision and it is approximately 25 cm and the far point of a normal human eye is up to infinity after that we have studied about the defects of vision the first defect of vision we have studied is myopia which is also called near sightedness and how myopia can be corrected by using a concave lens of appropriate power after that we have studied about hypermetropia which is also called far sightedness and how hypermetropia can be corrected by using a convex lens of appropriate power and the third defect of vision was presbyopia and how presbyopia can be corrected by using a convex lens of appropriate power and then we have studied about what is bifocal lens so bifocal lens if you see the picture of a bifocal lens here the upper part of the bifocal lens consists of a concave lens and the lower part of the bifocal lens consists of a convex lens after that we have studied how a single ray of light will behave when it is passed through a rectangular glass prism so this is how a single ray of light will behave when it is passed through a rectangular glass prism and while studying we studying this we have emphasized on what is angle of deviation and after studying this we have studied how white light will behave when it is passed through a rectangular glass prism so white light will get split into seven component colors and we obtain those seven component colors on a screen which is placed on the other side of the prism so all this we have studied after that we have studied about the rainbow formation so this is how a rainbow is formed a rainbow is formed because of the refraction of light after that internal reflection of light and after that refraction of light so rainbow is formed like this and after that we have studied what is atmospheric refraction and while studying that we have studied what are the events which are caused due to atmospheric refraction of light so the first event was the twinkling of the stars so why does stars twinkle it is all because of atmospheric refraction of light and we have studied why the apparent position of the star is at a higher position as compared to that the original position of the star and the second event associated with atmospheric refraction of light was advanced sunrise and delayed sunset and and the difference that means the time difference between the apparent position of the sun and the original position of the sun is approximately 2 minutes in case of advanced sunrise and also in case of delayed sunset our last topic was scattering of light under scattering of light we have studied about the events which are caused by scattering of light the first event which is caused by scattering of light is the blue color of the sky so we have we have understood why the color of the sky appears blue during daytime okay it is all because of scattering of white light again we have studied how scattering of light is related to the appearance of the sun at the time of sunrise and at the time of sunset so the sun appears red at the time of sunrise and at the time of sunset this is also because of scattering of white light so this is all we have studied in this chapter and this is the summary of this chapter in the next session we are going to solve some back exercises so that this chapter is more clear to you thank you